What's up, what's up to all my people and welcome to StonyCast number 136 and season 4 episode 34 of Thoughts and Hunches, Making Money in Bunches and Sucker Punches. It's your boy Stony coming back at you for the 136th time and I'd like to welcome all of my fellow lowlife, scumbags, hoodlums, shady characters, anybody named Phil Mickelson, Bruno Mars, or now Shohei Otani and Des Bryant, altar boys with unhealthy relationships with their priests, hustlers, foul mouth raging alcoholics, cheats, friends and family of the gooch, fienders with abusive language, and degenerates. I mean, let's face it, anybody with a massive gambling problem. If you're new to this show, hey, that means that you probably fit into a few of those categories. So welcome, because you're now one of us. One of us. One of us, one of us, gooba gaba, one of us, we accept it, one of us. Sorry, sometimes I get a little carried away there. Hey, make sure to hit the subscribe button right down here in the lower right hand corner. That way you get notified every time I put out a new video. To spread the words also very easy. Just tell other degenerates and scumbags you know, crews, to go to YouTube and enter thoughts and hunches in the search bar. That'll take you directly to my page, so that way you can get dialed into everything I give you. Also, if you're new to this show and you don't know what this show is all about, it's college and pro football winners, MLB playoff winners, and college basketball winners. I run from October, or excuse me, I run from August, the start of college football season, to the end of the college basketball season, which is 10 days away, nine days away now, excuse me. Um, the books, they, they don't expect a guy like me to deliver this many winners, right? That's what I do. I'm an outlier and a disruptor, right? I disrupt. I'm like the Beastie Boys. I'm a disruptor. Step inside the party, disrupt the whole scene. That's what I do, right? I, got, I get to go to the mattresses every single week and get the info for you in order to get you to the window with a ticket to cash. Now, before I get to the picks, as usual, I have some thoughts. Let's get to them. MSNB, MSESPN is at it again. The ultra woke network continues to slam the NCAA men's tournament while glorifying the women's tournament as the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's absolutely ridiculous, the hoops that they jump through to rip the men's tournament because they don't follow men's basketball until March. That's their fault. It's also their job. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if you work at ESPN, your job is to follow these sports and report on them and give your opinion on them, which they are, granted, but to not watch a sport all season long, even though your network is carrying tons of games throughout the season, it's not right to tear that sport down just because your network is not carrying the tournament. Now, to be fair, I understand that they are promoting the women's tournament because ESPN is airing it. But have they not watched the games? Same with the men's tournament on TBS, TNT, CBS family of networks. We've had some riveting games the last few days. And for the last weeks, for that matter. The Duke-Houston game last night was intense, and it came down to the wire. Same with Tennessee Creighton. On Thursday night, three of the four games that were played were all decided in the final minute, including the North Carolina-Alabama game, which became an instant classic. On yesterday's Pardon the Interruption, Michael Wilbon and Frank Izola spoke for five minutes about how the women's game is better because they know the players based on the fact that they've been there for three or four or five years. Four or five years, not three. They all stay all the way. Nobody leaves early. So just because the men's student athletes are only there for one or two seasons, then you should not cover or follow the men's game? Really? Case in point, the nation's number one recruit amongst high schoolers is Cooper Flagg from Maine. He became the only player in any state to win a state player of the year honor as a freshman. 
He then transferred to Montverde Academy in Florida, which is what all the big players do. They travel to, you know, they go to Las Vegas or they go to Florida and they play at these superstar academies. And he's continued dominating until he signed on to play at Duke next season. He's almost certainly a one and done. And he's going to be playing in the NBA at 19 years old. So just because he's not going to play at Duke for four years, does that mean I shouldn't follow him? I'm going to follow him for two simple reasons. He's an incredible ball player who will be must-see TV. And the second reason is because the men's game is just simply better than the women's game. And when he's dominating during the season, all the talking heads at ESPN can cover him and glorify him until the season ends. And then they can go back to telling us about how an inferior product, the women's game, is better. It's the epitome of hypocrisy. But then again, I shouldn't be surprised because it's what ESPN does, you know. And then you got this head coach from uh, uh, LSU, Kim Muckley, right? The the LSU women's team, the one who wears those ridiculous looking outfits. And she, you know, she suspended her star player a couple months ago and wouldn't tell the press why. No, nope, just wouldn't tell us. Right? Or us. I'm not I'm not a member of the press. But she would not tell the press, and the press didn't press her on it when they should have. They let her they let her be. Now she's telling sob stories about suing the Washington Post because she's got it in her head that a writer from the Washington Post is writing a hit piece on her that's based on lies. She's lawyered up and she will sue the Washington Post if it airs a false story. Who says it's false? You? Right? And while she's been blabbering about it all week, right? I don't follow it, but I can't ignore it. It's everywhere. Everyone's talking about it, right? She's been blabbering about lawyering up and suing the Washington Post all week long while in Baton Rouge. Now that she's gone from Baton Rouge and she's off in, I I don't know where they're playing. You know, wherever LSU's women are playing to, uh, this weekend, she won't talk about it now because she doesn't have the Baton Rouge and New Orleans press there, her friends. Now she's got the national media on her. She won't talk about it. No. Just like she didn't talk about why she suspended her best player a couple months ago. Who knows? I don't understand. But... It just goes to show you that even the press gets snubbed by people who think they're better than the press, you know, and it's ridiculous because the press bow downs and kowtows to some of these people instead of reporting the news. The news is she suspended her star player. The news is why? We don't know why. Right. And now why won't you talk about this so-called hit piece when the national media is in front of you. No, can't control the national media. You can only control the Baton Rouge press. Baton Rouge, please. All right, that's it. I I can't keep going on because I could literally talk all day about this nonsense, this bullshit going on in Baton Rouge. (laughs) Good God. Okay, as for programming notes, I have only three videos left in this season, including this one. The next video will come out Friday night. That'll prepare you all for the final four next Saturday, and the final video of the season will be a week from Sunday a day before the national championship. So make sure that you tune in. And the easiest way to do that, just like I said a couple minutes ago, just hit the subscribe button right down here and the video will find you. As for the week that was last week, after Thursday, or this week, it's not even last week, it's this week. After Thursday, I was hovering around the break-even point, right? But Or after Wednesday, but turned it up, right? Went 10 and 6, um, the numbers so far have been solid, right? Uh, after going and combined 10 and six in the other tournaments, I went six and two on Thursday and four and four last night. So I'm 10 and six in the NCAAs, 10 and six in the other tournaments 
and 20 and 4 on the week. 20 and 14. Did I say 20 and 4? 20 and 14 on the week. Those are solid numbers. Any way you look at it, those are top notch numbers. And I think the only one with the proper take on this is our good old friend Teddy. Teddy, tell us. Pay him. Pay that man his money. I mean, please remember that all these picks are 100% free. So for all the touts that give you 75 to 80% winners, come on now. We all know you're full of shit. Plus, you're charging for these picks. With me, just come to YouTube every week and I'll drop my plays on you for free. With only two games today and two more tomorrow, now's the time to get bigger, to bet bigger, and to go bigger as the season comes to a close. You ready? Let's get it all started today. In the East Regional Final at TD Garden in Boston at 6.09 Eastern on TBS. Top-seeded Connecticut is 8.5 point chalk over third-seeded Illinois, and the total is 155.5. Illinois took out all comers in winning the Big Ten Conference Tournament and followed, the, followed all that with blowout wins over Moorhead State and Duquesne last week and an impressive takedown of second-seeded Iowa State on Thursday. Terrence Shannon Jr. is the be-all, do-all, end-all for the Illini. And he's been one of the, probably the two best players, three best players in the tournament. But he has plenty of help. Southern Illinois transfer, the Salukis, War Salukis transfer, Marcus Domosk has been absolutely terrific as Shannon's sidekick. Coleman Hawkins fills up the stat sheet in every game. They're all going to have to be at the top of their games tonight, though, because the defending champs are better now than they were last season when they tore down the nets. Cut down the nets. <laughs> Excuse me. After spending most of the season at the top of the polls, the Huskies were barely challenged in winning the Big East Conference Tournament, and that was the last time they were even challenged. A 39-point win over Stetson, and a 17-point win over Northwestern were their highlights last weekend. And on Thursday night, they blew out San Diego State by 30 in a rematch of last year's national title game. UConn has no weaknesses, none. And they have an incredibly balanced roster. Cam Spencer, Tristan Newton, Stefan Castle, and Hassan Diara are all delivering as part of Coach Dan Hurley's incredible four-guard rotation. Donovan Klingon is the big man who defends and he can pass well as a guard, right? While Alex Caraban stretches defenses with his three-point shooting. UConn comes at you in waves and they're just relentless. Even though Illinois continues to hold their opponents below the season averages in three-point shooting, UConn, who shoots well from three, doesn't really need threes to win. They've also been crushing everyone in sight. And while Illinois has the goods to slip in under the number, I just don't see it. I see another Husky blowout, so give me Connecticut, lay the 8.5, and, and I'll take over 155.5. The West Regional is at the Crypto in La La Land at 8.49 Eastern on TBS. Fourth seeded Alabama is a 3.5 point favorite over 6 seed Clemson, and the total is 163.5. After a loss to Wake Forest to close out the regular season and a quick exit in the ACC tournament with a blowout loss to Boston College, something clicked and Clemson is now playing the best ball of the season. Not only have the Tigers won, but they're beating some good teams along the way. New Mexico, Baylor, and Arizona have all been victims of a balanced offense led by Chase Hunter and P.J. Hall. But Ian Shefflin, Joseph Girard, Dillian Hunter, they all contribute to an offense that's peaking at the right time. Now, well, hang on. <laughs> Give me a second here. Clemson's not exactly going to light up the scoreboard, right? But while they won't, Bama will. The Tide are the highest scoring team in the nation. They're averaging 87 points per game in the tournament after scoring triple digits against College of Charleston, being slowed down by Grand Canyon in round two, and hanging 89 on top seed North Carolina in Thursday night's Classic. 
The Tide's three-guard run game is led by All-American Mark Sears and the combo of Aaron Estrada and Ryland Griffin, but it was the huge game from Grant Nelson on Thursday night that propelled Bama to the Elite Eight. 24-12 and 12 with five blocks is a hell of a night, and he's going to need to be a presence in the paint tonight and slowing down Clemson. I like the way Clemson has played so far with their balanced offense, but when the game is on the line, teams need that guy, and that guy is Mark Sears. He had an off night on Thursday, but he still scored 18, showing that the Tide can win even when their best player struggles. I'm going to roll with the Tide here, lay the three and a half, and take the over 163 and a half. So that's all you get tonight. But now it's time to move on to tomorrow's in the Midwest Region Finals at Little Caesars Arena in Detroit. At 2.20 Eastern on CBS, where top-seeded Purdue is a three-and-a-half-point favorite over two-seed Tennessee, with the total set at 148. In the only regional final that held true to its seeding, Purdue bounced back from a Big Ten Conference Tournament semifinal loss to Wisconsin with three straight blowout wins in the big show. Grambling State and Utah State were last weekend's victims, and last night Gonzaga hung around in the first half before getting manhandled in the second half, bringing Purdue to their second Elite Eight in the last five years. Yeah, see, people don't talk about that. Everybody wants to talk about Purdue's failures of the past couple tournaments, first round upsets, the 16 seeds, last year first round upset. But this is their second trip to the Elite Eight, and Purdue's a very scary team right now. And if they keep winning, dare I say they might start to be considered a blue blood? They could be, but let's see what happens when Edie leaves. That's gonna be a that's gonna be a huge scene. So anyway, Zach Eady, he's the probable back to back player of the year. He gets twenty and ten just by showing up, right? Gonzaga's Graham. Ike, Graham Ike, oh God, he held him in check for the most part. But Edie still managed 27 and 14 last night. But it's the guard play for the Boilermakers that has been really impressive. Braden Smith has 14 points and 15 assists last night, while Fletcher Lawyer and Lance Jones kept knocking down threes when Gonzaga's defense collapsed on Edie. The second seeded Vols are trying to reach their first ever Final Four, right? after taking out St. Peter's, Texas, and Creighton last night. Tennessee's led by All-American Dalton Connect, who had 24-6-5 against Creighton. He does that again tomorrow, they're going to win. But it's the Vols' depth that has become more and more dangerous. Jonas Adu patrols the paint, while swingman Josiah Jordan-James just simply went off last night. Point man Zakai Ziegler not only kept scoring, and knocking down threes when the Vols needed him. But his defense is just incredible. SEC Defensive Player of the Year, right? He was just on it, and he limited Creighton's backcourt, uh, Jamal Meshack and Jordan Ganey, right? And Toby, you know, it, 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 he limited them all night, right? Jamal Meshack, Jordan Ganey, and Toby Awaka. That's what I was getting to. This is the Vols bench. They all delivered for UT, and they were relentless. Purdue is very reliant on Edie, but I like it, their guards have become the key to this, to their success. They really have. With the depth and defensive toughness of Tennessee, especially in defending the perimeter, I think for Purdue to win this, they're going to need an otherworldly performance from Edie. And now that's very possible. And they're, like I said a minute ago, they're getting scarier and scarier as the tournament rolls on because everyone's assuming they're going to lose because they always lose in March, right? <coughs> well, not necessarily. This could be their time. We could be running into a freight train of Purdue versus UConn in the finals, which kind of makes sense. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah. So will Edie go off? He'll have big night. He always does. But will he transform it and pull a Michael Jordan flu game? Who knows? I don't think so. 
And since that's not going to happen, I got to keep on rolling with the Vols. Catching three and a half over 148 and a half. And if I'm catching three and a half and over 148 and a half, I most definitely have to put a little sprinkle on the money line. 40? Where are you? Sprinkle me, man. Sprinkle me, man. Sprinkle. Yeah, something like that. And finally, to close out the Elite Eight in the South Region Final at America Airlines Arena in Big D at 5 Eastern on CBS. Fourth seeded Duke is six and a half point chalk over 11 seed North Carolina State. And the total is 143. What's funny is that these two squads, despite both being in the ACC, only met once in the regular season, with Duke winning in Raleigh three weeks ago. But NC State took down Duke in the ACC tournament, and both games landed exactly on 143. So why not post the total of 143 if you're the books, right? Makes sense, doesn't it? After losing to North Carolina to close out the regular season, and to NC State in the ACC tournament, Duke has been world beaters so far in the big dance. Vermont and James Madison were crushed by the Blue Devils, but it was last night's gutsy, tough win over a very physical Houston squad that opened everyone's eyes, showing that Duke can win two different ways. Sure, the injury to Houston's Jamal Shedd changed everything about last night's Duke win. Let's not miss that point, because I had Houston. <coughs> And I still believe Houston gets the win if Shed plays the entire game. <coughs> but don't discount Duke's toughness. Future NBAers Jeremy Roach, Tyrese Proctor, and Jared McClain are on extremely f- formidable three-guard offense, while Kyle Filipowski is just Duke's Swiss Army knife. <coughs> he does a little bit of everything. <coughs> and I got the coughs going right now. NC State, on the other hand, famously lost their last four games of the regular season and were not even considered for the tournament. But even more famously, they've since ripped off eight straight W's, including five wins in five days to win the ACC tournament and punch their ticket. Texas Tech, Oakland, and Marquette have all fell victim to a pair of DJs and a solid supporting cast. Big man, and I do mean big man, DJ Burns is the beef. DJ Horn is the guard who stretches defenses. And Casey Morsel and Muhammad Diara all make this a scary wolf pack, right? They're scrappy and they're tough. These two are very familiar with each other, these two squads. So there's not going to be many surprises here, right? The way Duke looked last night in locking up Houston makes them the obvious favorite. And I do believe that they get the W and move on to Phoenix for the final four. But I still like NC State catching six and a half. I'm going to roll with over 143 and a half also. And while I'm at it, you know what? I know it's a long shot. and But because it's a long shot, you'll get good odds on it. So why not give me a sprinkle on the money line? That's, you know, you just kind of have to, even if it's six and a half. Spread, money line, wolf pack, do them all, fire away, over 143. So that's what you get, four days, four games, two days, four games coming at you over the next two days. Make sure to check back daily on Monday and throughout the week as the CIT, the CBI, and the NIT all finish up. I'll have picks on those games in the comments section of this video right here. I'll also be posting Stonycast 137 on Friday for all the final f- for the two final four matchups. So until then, just remember, if you want to win big, you got to bet big. You can't go broke taking a profit. Scared money don't make money. For me, the action is the juice. There's money on the streets that can't be ignored. And finally, good luck to you. Gooch, miss you, my brother. This time, especially this time of year. Miss you. Finally, you know, yeah, I miss the Gooch. But the only way to close things out nowadays. Pay him. Pay that man his money. 
sometimes that man needs to get paid his money. Good luck, all.